Hello everyone. I'm so happy you're here with me today. You're here with Pablo and Mrs. B. That's me, Mrs. B. Now, today we are going to do a fun drawing and a great lesson about a very good artist who was French, a French artist. I bet you know some other French artists. You probably know many. But this one's name is Henry Rousseau. There he is. That's Henry Rousseau in France. Going to learn about him today. We're also going to read a story about Henry Rousseau. But before we start, and we're, before we start our lesson, we need some supplies. I'd like you to get some crayons to draw with and a jar of water because we're going to paint. We're going to paint with water today. If you have some washable markers, that would be great. But if you don't, that's okay. Maybe you have watercolor paint at home like this. So either will work. Either watercolor paints or washable markers. When we use water and washable markers, they will look just like paint. I will show you a little trick with that today. So what you need is paper to work on. I have my big paper here. You can have a paper this size, any size. Paper and crayons, that's the main thing. I'll wait right here for you with Pablo until you come back with your crayons and paper and a jar of water and a brush. And if you have paints that are watercolor paints, you can use those, okay? You might have something that looks like this. All right, anything will do. I will be right here. I think I will have a little bit of my tea while I'm waiting for you to come back. Great, see you in a few minutes. Okay, wonderful, you're back. Welcome back. Let's find out a story about Henry Rousseau. Let's read about his life and his paintings that he did. Henry Rousseau was born in Laval, France in 1844. Even though he never had any art lessons that were formal, Henry believed with all his heart that if he worked hard enough, he would someday become a great artist. He practiced and practiced. Henry Rousseau is best known for his jungle paintings like this. Jungle paintings with animals. Well, he also had a great imagination. At first, people didn't really like his paintings of the jungles. They thought he wasn't a serious artist and they wanted to know why he put all those strange things in those jungle pictures. Well, no one's ever done jungle paintings like this before. Let's see what he did. There are monkeys and in their holding they have a back scratcher. Can you see that? It has a, a stick and it's back scratcher and that's kind of funny. They wanted to scratch their back. And there is a bottle, something white inside. What do you think it could be in that bottle for the monkeys? Hmm, I think it looks like milk. Milk for the monkeys in a bottle. Might have been a baby monkey. 
and there's the jungle. People were used to artists that painted where their paintings looked like this, like Renoir, Pierre Renoir made paintings like this. These were called Impressionist paintings or Monet, Claude Monet. So these, these, um, this one, this above here is by Claude Monet and the one below here is by Pierre Renoir. Those were Impressionist artists and they're different, aren't they, than the jungle paintings that we have seen. And the artists before then, they painted things that looked very, very real, like this. And like that, portraying people at that time. But not Henry Rousseau, he did things different. He had a great imagination. Henry Rousseau lived in an amazing home when he was growing up in Laval. It was actually part of a gated tower that had been built hundreds of years ago. He must have had a lot of fun playing with his friends when he was a kid. Wow. This is what, the, what his house looked like. It was a tower. Isn't that awesome to live in a house like that? He played with his friends in that castle looking home. There is even a little store here. And here are his friends. And Henry Rousseau climbed all the way up to the top. And he's telling his friends that he wants to play with them. And he said, let's play Robin Hood. Oh, how about King Arthur? No, no. Hmm. Maybe Rapunzel. Oh, I've got it. Let's play the Three Musketeers because there's three of them there. That looked like a lot of fun to play in that house, didn't it? Well, he did not get discouraged even though people were saying that they did not like his paintings at first. He decided he was going to just keep going and painting and painting what he believed in. He really enjoyed painting and drawing the jungles. Here's another jungle picture. See that? Henry Rousseau lived to be age 66. Most important thing to Henry was not only to be a great artist, but to be known as a great artist as well. Near the end of his life, Henry Rousseau's dream finally came true. This is what he looked like when he got older and he became famous. There he is sitting in his studio holding a brush, and there's his painting. And what is he wearing on his head? Oh, well, let's see. I think he has something like this. What kind of a hat is that? That is an artist beret. How do I look in it? Well, that's what he was wearing all the time, a hat like this called a beret. Well, now we're going to use our imagination and we will draw some animal in a jungle. I'm going to teach you how. This picture here, I would like you to take a close look at. This one. Oh, there is a little bit of a glare because it, the, the picture is shiny. But I think you can see. What do you see in it? Do you see an animal? I do. I see a tiger. The name of this painting is Surprised. Do you think the tiger 
is surprised. I wonder what he saw that surprised him. And that there is a storm in the jungle. How do we know? Because the trees are blowing. You see that? Everything's blowing around. Tiger in a tropical storm, surprised. That was the painting. That's how he named it. Well, now we're going to draw. And later, we're going to paint. So first, we will make the drawing of an animal, and then we will paint. Here he is again, wearing that beret, wearing the hat, and holding his palette and a brush. This must be in France. Do you like that? I do. I think it's a great painting. It's a self-portrait. He did that of himself. So, we're going to begin. I will take some crayons now to draw with. Pablo's going to watch us. I'll put him over here so that he could see me drawing too. Does everybody see me? I'm going to move my chair and put this over here. Well, when we draw an animal or when we draw anything, we always think of shapes and lines, remember? That was from our bird lesson. Same thing here. I'm always thinking of shapes. So we first will make an animal and then you can use your imagination to add things to it, change the animal and put the animal in its environment, whether it's a desert or a jungle or mountains in the background. That's gonna be up to you. But first, let's begin. We're going to take any color you want. Uh, it doesn't have to be the real color. I'm going to start with a dark color so you can see my drawing, okay? So maybe I will just start with the darkest color I have, and that would be black. You can put your animal any place you want on your paper. It doesn't really matter where it is. We need to tilt the camera just a little bit away from over there. Okay, yeah, that's great. Okay, so you, the children can see me. Okay, here I am. And I'll bring this over here a little bit closer, like that. That's great. Okay, thank you. All right. Well, let's start with the head. Right? Animals have a head. So I'm going to draw a lion in here. You can make a tiger. Lions and tigers look very similar. One has a mane, the other one doesn't. And lion or tiger, any animal can be made this way. Even a hippo, anything that has four legs and a body and a head. But let's just practice and make, you can make other animals later. Let's just practice together and make shapes together. So I'm going to start with a head. Okay, so just draw a shape like this that looks like a circle or an oval for the head. Doesn't really matter, okay? Now, after you've done that, we're going to make the eyes in here. So you can make one eye and another eye, put a little eyeball in there too. Okay, you can do that. Can you see two little circles with a dot in the middle for the eye? Then I'm going to make a little triangle nose like that. I don't know if you can see that because it's so small, but there it is. And then after the triangle nose, I'm going to make three circles. One on one side of the nose, one circle on the other, and one on the bottom, like that, okay? 
three circles. I wonder if this is really, really far away from you because my camera is over there. I wonder if I can make my lion much bigger, I think. I will do that. I'll draw on the, on the back of this sheet so I don't waste my, my paper. I'll draw on the back like this. Okay, now I'm going to make it much bigger. Here is my head, right there, better. And eyes, and a triangle for the nose, and a circle next to my triangle, like this, and another circle, and a smile here for his mouth. You see that better now? Great. We'll put the whiskers in in a little bit to make him look like he's a lion. But then the lion needs to have another circle around this circle, doesn't he? Hmm, what should we do? Maybe this will be our mane and we'll go around or you can have a circle going around like this. From here, you can have a circle going around for his mane, like that. And later on, we will make something like this, zigzag lines, or what could these be called? Zigzags, we've practiced those up and down. You can practice to make that for the lion's mane. Okay, those up, down, up, down, up, down, up, like triangles. And I keep slanting it. Um, these are called angle lines, angles, like your elbow, elbow, this part, and then the other part, angle. It looks like a triangle. It's an angle line, down and up, down and up, like zigzaggies. Or you can make a curly mane like this. You can make it any way you want. It's your lion. See? I'm even putting some curls on top of my zigzags. Anything works and it's fun to experiment and try different things. Okay, so his head is there. What's missing? His body. Well, I'm going to wait just a little bit until you finish your mane, any way you want. Maybe we should put the whiskers in now so we don't forget. Right here, whiskers are right there by his nose, right there by the triangle, on the bottom of the triangle are the whiskers. Make his whiskers nice and long going all the way to his mane, there. Great, okay, terrific, you're doing great. So far, so good. Now we're going to make his body. Well, to make his body, we need to have a shape. How about a rectangle shape? So we're going to start about here or here, wherever you want. You could do it up here or here and make his body. So I'm going to go like this, a line out, and I'm gonna curve it just a little bit here at the end. See how Mrs. B made that line for the body? I went out and a little bit down like that for his body. I curved it a little bit there. And then I'm going to continue it. I'll just wait until you are with me. And now I'm going to continue down like this and like this. You can curve it here too if you want to. And like this to here. OK, 
Okay. That's a good rectangle. Has a little bit of a curve here and a curve there. So it doesn't have a sharp point. Later on, we'll put a tail here. Now he needs some legs. Okay, so we need to decide. We can put the legs over here like this. We just make two lines. Well, we could make a little slanted line if we wanted to this way and then this way or just straight lines like that, whichever way you want. We need two lines. So that's one leg. Now leave a little space and now we want to make the next leg over here. Next one, because he has two in the front and two in the back, like that. And let's make two in the back. Okay, ready? Where would you start in the back? Right about here. And in the back, we have one and then the other one, maybe a little bit shorter, make it look like it's further back. Then we need toes, but I'll wait until you catch up with your legs. We're just making lines. Lines and lines down and close it up at the end like this. Connect them. Connect the lines. Good. Terrific. Now we need some little toes. So we're going to go like this. A little oval, another oval, and another oval made three ovals. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Like that. Great. So far, our shapes are really working for us, aren't they? Got a rectangle, a circle, a dot, a triangle, we have lines, straight lines. Now we're gonna make a curved line like we did in the abstract. Curved line, which is like a wave, a wavy line. A curved line can be like this, like a circle, a half a circle. We're gonna curve his tail. Won't that be fun? His tail can curve down or up any way you want. Mine's going up like this. You could also make it going down. Any way you make it, he's your lion drawing. Okay, now at the end here, we could make something that looks like this, like a little oval, like lions have little hairs at the end, right? It looks like this. It's like a little oval at the end. That's his hair. Right, if, you're, if your um, tail is very skinny, if it's just one line, just make another line right next to it to make it a little fatter so you can color it in later. Okay? Like that. That's very good. You're doing great. Now, what else? Where is this lion? Maybe he's in a jungle somewhere? Or maybe there's some hills and mountains behind him? We don't know. Maybe there's a sun in the picture. I would really like that. If I had a nice orange sun in the picture, I'm going to color it in. And I'm going to give my lion some grass to stand on, too. When you're coloring today, this is going to be an unusual request, because usually we don't press very hard with our crayons. But if you hold the crayon down low, not here, because if you press hard, the crayon might crack. If you hold it a little lower down, then it won't break when you're trying to press harder. 
we want to get more of the color on here so we're pressing just a little bit harder today because we're going to use our paintbrush today and paint over it I'll show you a little trick well you know we could also make some hills in the background besides having him be here on the ground with lots of greenery and plants all kinds of plants and hmm, I'm gonna use different shades of green some dark green some light green Henry Rousseau did that he really liked using different greens in his picture might even have a, a big branches coming out here like this and it's coming over him like that big branches and even in his in his paintings or in your painting you may want to put some bushes that are red color or pink or whatever you can put them in here like this they could look like that we have plants like this that are red. We also have plants that have little circles like that. Little circles, little flowers everywhere and they have little stems like that. They're all connected. So you can do something like that too. Anything you like. We're going to fill some of it in down here for our environment where he is. I'm just working fast. I'm going to give you time to, to color all of this in few minutes. I just want to show you what you can do. Now I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to make something white. I think I'll go around his eyes with a little white crayon. If you don't have a white crayon, just use a light color, any light color, okay? And I want to make his mane kind of orange-yellow color in here, right? Orange-yellow, yellow-orange. Fill that in too. You can fill it in. And I'm going to use two different colors. You can use orange, yellow, orange, and a nice, this one's called yellow orange color. It's a little brighter, see? Just go back and forth like this, zigzaggy angle lines like this, back and forth, and press, 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 like that. It's a very big mane and color his body back and forth back and forth like this with your crayon while I'm coloring mine you color yours and we'll work together I'm even going to add a little orange to my bushes here. Why not? Make it more colorful. We need a little more green in here. Dark green and light green. I have dark green here. Some grasses, tall grasses. There's tall grasses in the jungles, you know. You've seen those. Okay. 
well. Ah, I've been working and I could add more, more and more and more. There's, I never know when to stop because I'm having so much fun when I draw. I'll put a little yellow in here into my branch. There. Now, oh, I forgot to color his face. Excuse me. Go around the eyes. Don't color the eyes orange. His eyes are not orange. It can be blue or green. Green probably is a great color for his eyes. Let's see, do I have a green one? Yes, I do. I'm gonna make green in here. There. Okay, now. You'll have plenty of time to put other um, animals and um, other things into your painting. I just want to show you what we're going to do after you get done with all those other details that you may want to put in. You may even want to draw um, a baby next to the mommy. Okay, so you might want to draw a, a baby, um, a little baby um, lion. And you can give the lion a name. You can name him. Okay, I left some things here. I'm going to need to fill them in just a little bit more. Remember I told you to fill everything in and press a little harder. Now, I think there might be some hills back there, but not, I'm going to make it with white. Now, this is really going to be fun. White doesn't show up on white, right? But I'm going to do a little trick. I'm gonna use white and we'll see if it shows up later. I'm gonna make some lines like this for some hills or whatever I want white back there. I might put a little bit of white on here. I'm not going to tell you what it is, it's a surprise. Okay, maybe I'll make a little white cloud up here too. A little white cloud. It's not showing up yet, but wait till you see what I'm going to do. Now, if you don't have, oh, maybe I'll make little white circles here for some white flowers, even though you don't see them yet. Now, remember I told you, you can take a little break from drawing and just watch Mrs. B, because when I'm finished, it'll be your turn to paint. Right now, I want you to stop drawing and just watch me. And if you're not finished drawing, it's okay. You'll have time to draw after I'm done, okay? So now remember the water and the brush. And if you have paints, you can use paints. If you don't, you can use washable markers. We can just draw some lines here like this for the sky. You don't even have to fill it in. If you want to, you can, but you don't have to. You can just take water and go right over the washable marker. And look at that, it's turning blue. Just like paint, it works like paint. So we want to just put a little bit of lines on there and works like paint. You see, like that. If you have a marker, you can do that. But if you have paints like these, 
then you can take a little bit of a color and dip water and dip the point, the point of the brush. Go round and round like this, just a little bit. And now you can go and paint right over your crayon. Look at that. My cloud is popping up. Again, water and a little bit of paint. Oh, there's something white here popping up. I'm going to paint right over my entire painting for the sky, even over my tree, and spread it with water like this. Very little paint on your brush and lots of water and just spread it around like this. You see how I'm painting? Just with water and a little paint. Go over everything, the whole thing. Watch me, don't do anything yet. I'll go first and then it'll be your turn. Now, I just want you to watch. A Little bit of water, a little bit of paint, like this. Now, if you don't have paint, uh-oh, there's something coming through here. If you don't have paint, don't worry, you can use your washable marker. Now, there is something up there. I see something. I see something in here. <gasps> oh my goodness, look at that. That's where I put white. It's a mountain with some snow on top. Oh, far away. The snow has not melted yet. In some places, it's still cold. Just keep going like this. Oh, look, I put white there and the white is popping out. I know you can't see from far away, but I'm going to bring it closer to you in a minute. There. Maybe you don't want the whole sky blue. Maybe you would like to have a mm, little bit of red in your sky up here, like this. A little bit of red like a sun setting when it's red, like this. You can make yours any way you want. Now let me bring this just a little closer because it's hard to see the paint. Now can you find some of the white that Mrs. B did? Look at that mountain at the top. It has white and we didn't see that before, but now when we paint it, it popped up and the white little circles right there on my red stems, okay? So, if you don't have paint, let's see if this will work. What if I used red here, a red marker, like that, just made some few little red lines. Let me see if that will work with a brush and water from a marker. Ah, oh, look, it's turning to paint. Yes, it's working. So you can use your markers, just make some lines, few little lines, and then spread it with paint. Well, I'm not finished, I need to go down here. Maybe down there I'll use some yellow. Use some yellow, maybe a little orange. Oh, something popped up. Oh, what a surprise. What was that? Oh, I added a little bit more red in here. What a surprise. The white keeps popping up because I drew with a white crayon. I'm painting right on top of all of my crayon. Water, see how often I dip in my water? I use very little paint, a lot of water. I'm going to paint right over, right over his legs. Right over everything. A little bit of green on my brush and right over his legs, see? Because he's in the jungle. There. I'm 
almost finished. It's going to be your turn in just a minute. I just want to show you how I'm covering up right over my crayons and over my lion. And I can do his body too. I'm going to paint right over his body. I changed from blue to green. You can keep changing the colors any way you want. You're the artist. Water on the brush. Oh, I think I forgot to paint his mane. I can use any color I want for that. Maybe I'll just do it with the yellow to make it a little bit brighter. See? Like that. Whoops, I almost dipped my brush in my teacup. Oh my goodness, I better put this away. Okay, now. A little more yellow on the mane and a little bit more yellow on his head, but not the eyes. Let's leave the eyes nice the way they are. Wow. He's almost finished. Now it's going to be your turn. Let me just show you how he turned out. There he is. You see him? And can you find some white? Look up here. The white just popped up. And the reds, and there's some white there too. Okay, let's see where your lion's going to be. Is he going to be in a jungle? Is he going to be somewhere else? Maybe your lion is at the zoo. Maybe there's going to be uh, a lion at the zoo or a lion at a circus. He could be at a circus. could be a circus tent. He could be inside. Or, I don't know, you put your lion wherever you want. Okay? All right. Well, I'm going to give you lots of time now at home to finish your picture so that you will have time to paint yours. Okay? All right, doing great. Now, I will see you next time. But before I go, guess who wants to see you? Pablo. Pablo, I'm done with mine. But now the children are going to finish theirs. And they are having a great time. Well, Pablo is very happy today because he really likes shapes. And we made this with shapes. Let's name those shapes again. Circle. Another circle. Circles for the eyes. Dots for the eyeballs inside. Triangle for the nose, circles for the mouth here. We made a rectangle and we made, oh, these look like rectangles too for the legs. And we made little ovals down here for his toes. Okay, and a circle for the sun. Well, that was great. Thank you. Boys and girls, everyone, you did a great job and keep drawing and I'll see you again next time. Pablo's gonna say bye-bye. Bye-bye everyone. Have a great day. Bye.